let's talk today about the skills that you have that you didn't even realize that will prepare you for a job in the world of cybersecurity. I've always found that there are people who have like outside groups or outside skills that come in and put a new spin on stuff. So I'm excited to see where this goes. Tony, what do you think? Oh, I'm I'm looking forward to this. I I have a I just have a feeling that it's it's going to be a bunch of skills that uh, most people might not realize actually fit for for cybersecurity. One of the things that um, I and, and our team often do when we're uh, working with people who want to get into the world of cybersecurity, but they think, wow, you know, I come from a food services background, or I'm a landscape architect, um, or I'm an emergency room nurse. Um, but I want to get into cybersecurity. I don't have the skills necessary to get into that world. And I say, well, let's hold on a second. Let's talk about some of the native skills that you have. So one of the examples that um, I use is I ask, uh, you know, where is your passion? So as an example, if I, if I gave you an option of designing a constitution for a newly formed country, does that excite you? Or are you like, ugh? If that excites you, congratulations, GRC might be the place for you. But if I say, hey, if I, uh, do you like very intricate, detailed work where you might hand, hold on to a piece of work for a very long time, you have an investigative mind, I might say, huh, digital forensics might be the place for you. Uh, are you the type of person where if something uh, was wrong in the house, as an example, you were there to fix it, a poster was broken, uh, your parents come into your room, your bedroom and, and pieces of machinery are just all over the place as you're trying to fix things. Congratulations, you might actually be a security engineer. And so we start to look at some of those native skills and then say, hey, what applies? For example, if I'm an emergency room nurse, I'm probably going to be pretty good um, at handling crisis. Uh, and if I'm really good at handling crisis, then areas like incident response might be an effective place for me. There's a, a difference between knowledge and skills. And knowledge is just understanding something, but skills are that innate ability, like you said, um, the the person growing up that wants to tinker with everything, right? That's an that's innate skill, uh, someone that can handle crisis like uh, an emergency room nurse, that's a, that's a skill. It's, and you're reminding me of, of times where we've interviewed people and they may not have on paper like a resume that says they've done cybersecurity for five years, but we'll ask them about the things that they have done and it's, it's the sorts of situations they've been they've dealt with in the past. And a lot of times you'll find out like, this is a person who's a self-starter. This is a person who, even if they don't have it, they have an idea of how to approach a problem. I agree. And and oftentimes it's a it's a knowledge translation. So the example of the landscape architect, um, when you think of what a landscaper does, they deal with protection and defense with biological systems or with natural systems. Right. And they're architects. So they have to think about things from a bigger picture. And um, because beauty and design is a component of what they do, they often have experience in looking at, say, for instance, the experience of the user. Um, as part. So, they, so a landscape architect come to find out actually makes a, a fairly good cybersecurity person uh, if you can start to translate their world to the cybersecurity world. I think from, from that, if you, if you translate that into someone that deals with the data analytics side of cybersecurity and they're able to see how beautiful data can be, mm -hmm. that could be some other area that someone that has that artistic uh, ability can can look at it, and if you have some other logical skills, you you put those together, and you know cybersecurity from a data analytics perspective may be something because some people think data is is beautiful, and I I don't disagree with them. I'm also reminded of a tweet that I actually kept and saved from years ago. Um, it's a guy T Profit on on Twitter who you know, I don't know if you've heard of him, but the one thing that he said is your longer attention span, curiosity, and your willingness to go the extra mile, work extra hard, and try stuff that's not in the manual is what makes you different and special. And that stuck with me for a while, so I screenshotted it. But there's also definitely a place for people who are creative and trying to smash up different ideas in their head to find either a better solution or a solution where none exists. So I'm just going to stop you right there because I know someone that is exactly like that. 
And he is this individual that absolutely loves smashing things together and trying to figure things out. Uh, his name is Matt. He's actually ah. sitting here. <laughs> but the skill set you have that is about puzzles. It, I can see it in your head how you look at something and you'll look at it from a hundred different ways trying to pull it apart. And that is one of those other innate skills. What do you think is driving the need for us to look outside of the box in terms of bringing on new skill sets, new experiences? Um, you know, so as an example, um, I'll use identity and access management and HR people as an example. HR people make really good security people, I found. They understand the business. They understand how to keep things confidential. Uh, they do investigations all day long. The only way that we're going to get like a lot of this new knowledge is bringing in people who think differently. So I have a question. So I think differently. I'm coming outside the world. How do I know what of which of my innate skills are going to line up to which uh, areas of cybersecurity? So how, how do I figure out the areas that I'm going to thrive? Or are we saying that as a junior person, I should be ready to go into any area of cybersecurity? I think the direction that I would take it is I would work on trying to get those individuals exposed a little bit to mm -hmm. uh, various facets within cybersecurity to spark their interest. If if you see something that they're they're pulled to, it's not the knowledge at that point; it's the innate skill set that they have. Saying I like the puzzle, or I like the structure, or I like the crisis. Um, mm -hmm. to actually get them. So it's that little bit of exposure to each of the facets and let them kind of be pulled to it. One of the things that I've done in the past with my guys is I'll tell them that they're just starting out, like, here's what I'd like you to do to learn. But also I'm going to give you like a list of YouTube videos where I'll tell them, go, go look at the last DEF CON conference videos from the last couple of years and just pick a topic that you think is interesting. Mm -hmm. And just keep watching stuff. Like it's probably a faster way to deal with it if I were to try and find you a way to talk to the representative from IAM, the representative from inter uh, from incident <laughs> response. But I can give them YouTube videos, and if they click with that, that's at least a starting point to say, okay, well, at least the topic is something that you think is fascinating, and you know why it it's it's drawing you in. So let's let's see if we can't get you actually exposed to that, and maybe it is a good fit. Do you know what I think, Matt? I think I'm going to steal your YouTube video idea because I think that's awesome. Okay. That's a great way of doing it. I, I will be stealing mercilessly your idea for YouTube videos. Um, mm -hmm. I'll give you credit, but it's stolen. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. What I is, won't give him credit. Oh, that's fine. So I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that um, we'll do sometimes is uh, I, I'll take a junior person and I'll say, I want you to go onto LinkedIn and I want you to find the uh, three different levels of people um, and their profiles. And so I want you to see someone who's at the top of their career, mid-level career and junior career. And I want you to look at their LinkedIn profiles and tell me which one inspires you most. I like the idea. And it's it's a good way to, to get perspective. Generally, from what I've seen, there's about 18 months of this imposter syndrome um, uh, where it's overwhelming to the point I might quit. Um, you know, there's 18 months of eyes this big. I don't know how I'm going to get through it. I know nothing. I'm never going to figure it out. There's that 18 months. Right about 18 months, you're like, I think I understand something. And then things start to kind of click. What are those skills that get me through that 18 months? I think persistence is one of them. I mean, just getting past the phase of self-doubt and realizing that you can actually do it, you do have to be able to persist and stick with whatever it is that you're working on, even when it feels like it's frustrating or you may not ever get it. I, just, I still think being detail oriented is, mm -hmm. is an important one to have. I know not everybody has it, but if if not, at least being organized enough to be able to refer back to where you kept the information, because I know that there's enough stuff in a day, for me at least, that I've, I've given up on the idea of trying to keep it all in here. It goes onto the notepad or it doesn't <laughs> exist. It never happened. And sometimes it's because I forget about it and that's on me. But um, I don't know, Tony, what do you think? Are there any particular skills that you would? There we go. Notepad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think 
I think if someone wants to change their career and move into cybersecurity, that right there takes a lot of a lot of guts to do. Like all the places that I've moved to, every time I made that decision to shift, that's that could be scary for people. Some of it in my past was scary, but I did it and I'm like, okay, well, I got past that. All right, what's next? And if you keep looking back and saying, I did that already, the mountain that you're on right now is going to look a lot smaller. At least I feel that way. There will never be a moment where you go into a room and you know everything and you're going to be able to answer um, every question. Uh, and I, I, I do like that idea, Tony, that you were mentioning about look back a year, everything, look back a week, look back a month and say, wow, how far have I come? Uh, with uh, with our junior students, we'll do that a lot of times, uh, especially right around that, say, four or five month mark, you know, and, and take a moment and say, look back, because five months ago, you knew nothing about cybersecurity. We're talking about kill chains today. You know, we've talked today quite a bit about the responsibility of a junior person coming into the industry, but both of you guys have also talked about the responsibility we have as leaders in cybersecurity, as managers, as hiring authorities in cybersecurity to recognize those skills and figure out how we can cultivate them and bring them along for the journey, because at the end of the day, somebody did it for us. This has been an amazing conversation. I can't. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.